Welcome to a Starter and a Chaser podcast with your hosts, Joe Clark and John Passo. Everything is made in China, except for fortune cookies. Ancient Chinese secrets. Oh, <laughs> hi. Welcome to another episode of a Starter and a Chaser podcast. I am John Passo. I am Joe Clark. And Joe, I'm kind of excited about this because I, I, I love the person behind this company. It is the Burning Chair Bourbon Whiskey. It's got a burning chair on it. From Savage and Cook. Yes, the chair is on fire. It's on fire. I hope nobody was sitting in that when that happened. I think there was. Do you think the chair spontaneously combusted or the person? The person. The person. I like that. Epic. <laughs> <laughs> so Savage and Cook was started in, uh, well, founded in 2016 by Dave Finney. And Dave Finney is of... California Napa royalty. He is my favorite winemaker. He started Orange Swift Winery, who wine fans out there will probably know from The Prisoner and Saldo. Uh, he focuses on really complex, bold wines, and he took that and had that thought when he started the distillery of Savage and Cook. They opened their doors officially in 2018. They are based out of Mare Island, which is in Vallejo, California. And his master distiller is Vaya, who was the distiller for Breckenridge Distillery. I was actually, I've sold a lot of Dave Finney's wine back in the day. I went to his tasting room, actually stumbled onto his tasting room when I was in St. Helena, Calistoga on his opening day, and I didn't even know it was his opening day. <laughs> it was so cool, and I got to meet the man. I did the whole Wayne's World, we're not worthy thing. So I'm excited to dive into this and uh, really figure out if the bold intensity from the wine world has officially carried over into the whiskey world. Joe, what are you smelling on that sucker? A lot of butterscotch. A lot of butterscotch. A lot of vanilla, a lot of caramel. Some fruity notes in the background there. Not, it, it's more tropical. Usually with uh, your American whiskeys and bourbons and stuff, especially your bourbons, you get a lot of the dark fruits, the cherries yeah. and stuff like that. This kind of got more of like a mango pineapple-y kind of smell going on back here, John. Interesting. Yeah, it is really interesting, but the butterscotch is just powerful on this. It is the main note on the nose here. It was, it's the man in charge. The man in charge. <laughs> <laughs> so he does source some of his barrels too. So like mm -hmm. from Tennessee, Indiana, and Kentucky, and they all bring their own unique thing that, you know, to his whiskeys that he blends and stuff like that. So yeah. And this is a blend of minimum four, four years. years. Yeah. One, two, three, four, six, six, <laughs> 12. Right. It's 18. How, how would the prime number be? Anyways. So this is a beautiful uh, caramel color to it. Yes, caramel it is. Caramel on the nose and caramel on the color. Caramel, yeah, some gold to it. Yeah, uh, and it's nice. By the way, the, the burning chair photograph on the front, he's known for doing these really kind of crazy, stylish, artsy labels. Uh, and obviously, he's carried that through to the distillery. Nice. It's a thick drink, man. It's got some nice legs going on there. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. Uh, 88 proof. Yeah, right? it is. 88 yeah. proof. Yeah. And they use water sourced from the uh, on site at the distillery. They have a, a spring there yeah. that they have tapped, and they use that water to uh, titrate. Very high well. elevation property is what they were saying, too, mm -hmm. where the spring is. So, yeah, it's nice. Oh, wait. No, I'm sorry. For this one, uh, it comes from his high elevation uh, property in Alexander Valley. Yes. 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 I, okay. I'm, I was mistaken. I do yeah. apologize. I will take myself out back and right. vlog myself. Well, I'm just going to sit here and drink. <laughs> All right, Gross. let's do it. Cheers. Mm. Caramel and spice. Oh, like cinnamon spicy. red hots. Yeah. It is spicy. Yeah, it is definitely a candy spice. Like he said, it's a cinnamon red hot. Mm -hmm. For sure. Uh, butterscotch, caramel, a lot of the lighter fruits, more tropically. Let's go in first. Yeah, time. it definitely is tropical. The barrels are present. A little barrel of tannins going on, but I mean, it's a nice, oaky, chewy, yeah, yeah, chewy. ready kind yeah. of drink here going on. Um, it's got a kind of a, a medium mouthfeel. 
Yeah. Uh, the initial hit of that caramel kind of belies like uh, a, a, a thicker feel, but it quickly drops down to medium for me. Uh, tropical fruits, I get kind of this light mango, a little bit of honey uh, that is in there throughout the palate, but really starts to shine on the finish. I get this uplifting brightness on the finish, mm -hmm. but yeah, the barrel is in there. It doesn't dominate. It balances. Red Hots, man. Red Whoa. Hots, yeah. Yeah, it's good. The butterscotch is really nice in this for me. Getting a slight hug. Are you getting a hug? A little bit, yeah. Uh, unexpected for uh, 88 proof, actually. And that's not a bad thing because it's it's very well integrated with all this. Mm -hmm. Sometimes some drinks you want it to be extra smooth and not so alcohol hit, but sometimes you like... The flavors on this are so powerful that you almost kind of need something else there to balance it out a little bit. And I feel the alcohol with the cinnamon red hot spice works very well. That's a very yeah. good point. Yeah. Um, I'm getting kind of like a banana note now. Oh, wow. It's, it's yeah. very off, far, far on the finish. I was getting very this bready note, and that actually is like a banana bread. Yeah, tree. banana bread. Yeah. I could see that. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is really complex. It's super complex. Uh, no, I'm not going to say that. Uh, this is not something, this is not the first time I've had this. It's funny because when these first hit the shelves, probably back in 2018, even here in Ohio, was Burning Chair was the first offering here in Ohio of his from Savage Cook. And I got it because the bottle looks so cool. Honestly. It is uh, definitely stands out on the shelf. <laughs> it does, and yeah. I, I have been seeing it here and since I moved back to Cleveland for the past year. And it's the bottle catches my eye every time. And I look at the labels because yeah. there's a couple of them out here. Lip service, yeah, rye lip service, is really yeah. good too. Uh, yeah. And I, I look at it and I'm like, God, that reminds me of Orange Swift stuff and Dave Finney's stuff. And it turns out it is. It is. Yeah. <laughs> it's good. It's very good. Joe, final thoughts besides it's good, it's very good. What, so, what's, what's your in summation? Obviously, this guy knows what he's doing. He's done wine that he is not worthy of. And uh, it transfers over to his distillery for uh, his whiskey. I mean, it's fantastic. The powers are... The, the, fl <laughs> the, the power, powers. The, the flavors <laughs> are nice and powerful on this. The nose is really powerful. It's actually shockingly concentrated at 88 proof for a whiskey. And it's, it's very good. It's very good for being so concentrated at such a low proof, it has a, a drinkability to it. It does. That yeah. it, it, you can sit there and go, I'm not bogged down by all of this intensity. Mm -hmm. it, it still has this lightness to mm -hmm. it that, that it's really very gives it a, yeah. a drinkability. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't quite get the mouthwatering part. I, I get the complexity, but for me, it's not quite mouthwatering. Um, Everybody's different. Uh, from my favorite winemaker, who does these outlandish, crazy, just like monstrous zins that crush you at 18% alcohol, to going to this, I feel like this has tamed his style a little bit. While his, his wine stuff is complex and refined as well, there is a bit of this monstrosity to it. Whereas this has those, those intensities but I feel like it's a little bit more refined okay. than what his wine brings to the table. Okay. I love it. Complex, long, super long finish, expertly crafted, yep. blended. Uh, his master distiller knows what he's doing. Apparently, they've got some small batch stuff that they do at the distillery. I'd be too. really interested in uh, trying I, this at barrel proof. Because this brings concentration like a lot of barrel-proof whiskeys does. And that's why, I, for me, this is really good. And to have a barrel-proof version of this? Yeah. <laughs> Dave, if you're watching, nom, 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 nom. just a sample. Just a second. little bit. Two, two ounces. Yeah, just a little, little bit. bit. A little bit. A little bit. <laughs> Maybe a little bit more. Okay, full bottle. All right, give, me, give us a barrel. That's fine. Uh, <laughs> but anyways, that was our review of Savage and Cook, the burning chair from California. We will catch you next time. Be sure to hit subscribe before you go. No, don't leave. Don't leave. Hit subscribe. Oh, they, leave a comment down below if you guys have had some of his stuff too. So. They left. Yeah. They didn't hit subscribe. Yeah.